So you can see here the last point of this unit that is riveted joints. And in this case also, we are going to uh, see only some introductory part of this riveted joint. Okay. First of all, let uh, me tell you what the joints were started, uh, that joint after forging technology. This riveting technology was uh, developed. And these riveted joints were used for big pressure vessels, like you might have seen in case of old uh, railway or locomotive engines, steam engines. The boiler were prepared from these riveted joints. If not, you can see uh, in Pandapur railway station also, one railway engine is available, which has kept uh, outside of that station. You can see it. And uh, for that, the tank which has prepared for uh, containing the water as well as steam, that has been prepared from the uh, riveting technology. Nowadays also, uh, for some applications, these riveted joints are used. You might have seen in old railway station where the structure has been uh, built by means of this riveted steel structure I'm talking about. And that has been built by the riveting technology. Um, you might have heard about that uh, bridges which has constructed. And uh, if you are going to see the structure of that bridge, then you'll find the joint of that two components to uh, structural part has been done with the help of these riveting joints. Now basically these riveted joints are having two types. One is lab joint and butt joint. Most of the cases these lab joints are used, but if you are going to compare it uh, with the other type of joints like welded joints, then these joints are not that much capable or that much uh, sustainable of the pressure as well as leakage. So leakage is the most important problem in case of these riveted joints. As well as second thing is that as we are going to drill a hole in the parent material, that's why stress concentration will get increased and the parent material gets weakened because of the uh, drilling of hole. That same thing happens in case of uh, bolted joints also. But only thing which we can uh, recover related to the strength as well as the stress concentration is in the welded joints. In that case also, uneven heating may rise to uh, stress concentration. That care has to be taken when we are going to choose a particular joining method for two different structural parts or components of the machinery. Now, in this case, first we, we can see this is the uh, type of lab joint by means of which two plates are connected together and sectional view at XX has been represented here. And uh, no doubt that uh, this array type of st structure is used in case of riveted joints. And that is for the making this joint much more uh, capable to sustain the load, that is tensile or shearing load. Now, the failure which is occurring in case of riveted joints, that failure are of two different types. One is tearing of the plate at an edge. At the edge, this tearing may take place because of the tensile load. This plate, whichever may be weaker, may get tear and this joint may get play. Okay. And second, across the row of that, or tearing will be take place across the row of that riveted joints. That means this type of tearing may take place in case of this riveted joints. And why? Because we are going to see this, because while uh, designing any component, you have to take care that you have to provide some allowance for uh, these riveted joints so that this type of failure may be avoided in case of distributed joints. Next thing, if you want to calculate the uh, resistance which is offered by means of this riveted joints, because we are going to see only introductory part and no problems will be there, but we can uh, study how this uh, uh, 
uh, what we can say strength is calculated for the riveted joints first of all we'll uh, consider p is the pitch of that rivets pitch is nothing but the distance between uh, two successive rivets okay d is the diameter of that rivet hole t is the thickness of the plate which we are going to connect together sigma t is the permissible tensile stress for the plate material uh, in this case we are knowing that the tearing area which is there in uh, case of riveted joints that uh, varies as per the pitch length of that riveted joints here you can see as the pitch is going to change that means distance between two successive rivets are going to change then the uh, available area for the tearing that or for the failure that will also get changed so that is depend upon the pitch of that length as per the area so area which we are going to calculate is the a sub x t is equal to p minus t that is nothing but the pitch that is the distance between these two minus d d is nothing but r we are going to uh, subtract from here and remaining r we are going to subtract here you can see this diagram i will take this diagram to the next slide so that it will be easy to refer us okay so this area is calculated by means of this small distance which is available for sustaining the tearing load multiplied by thickness of this plate okay hence the tensile load which will be sustained by means of this riveted joint that tensile load is equal to ten area for the sustaining this tensile load multiplied by the tensile stress allowable tensile stress in that material if we are going to put the uh value of a area which we have calculated right now in this equation then this tensile load or tensile load carrying capacity p sub x t is given by p that is the pitch minus diameter of the rivet multiplied by thickness of that plate into allowable tensile stress okay so when tearing resistance that is the pt that is the load which is carried by means of this riveted joint and uh, which will not undergo to the failure okay is greater than the applied load if this sustaining load is greater than this applied load per the pitch length then and then only we can say this type of joints are safe okay so this p which is applied actually that should not exceed to this tensile load carrying capacity of this joints any doubt third type of failure which is occurring is the shearing of the rivets now these two types of failure which we have seen in that case we have seen how to calculate the load carrying capacity of that joint now here we are going to see the how to calculate the this rivet diameter because it is important which is directly undergoing for the shear when the tensile load is applied okay so plate which are connected by means of riveted joints okay and undergoes to the tensile stresses so they will create the tensile loading as well as they are going to create the shear in that rivets okay so let us consider that d is the diameter of the rivet which we have to choose which we have to make in such a way that shearing of rivet will not occur tau is the safe or permissible shear stress in the rivet material now we are not talking about this uh, parent materials which are connected together because in previous case we have seen that this failure is occurring for the plate in that case we are considering that the rivets are much more stronger than the plates now in second case we are going to consider that rivets are, are weak but plates are strong and hence they are shearing that plate instead of getting failure in the plate failure is taking place in the 
rivet and hence the rivet material is weaker than the plate material that, that we are going to consider for this type of failure failure may occur in both the cases that is uh, either the plate may get tear or rivet may get shear so in that case it may happens but while we are going to calculate the strain while we are going to design this type of joints first in first failure we are going to consider rivets are very strong they will uh, sustain all the load which is applied on that joint so here stress which we are going to consider shear stress for the rivet materials and n is the number of rivets per pitch length okay so how many number of uh, rivets are used in that per pitch length now you can ask that how we can calculate the number of rivets which are used per pitch because here this is the distance between two successive rivets but the rows are used as a three rows so this will become three rivets per unit pitch along the longitudinal direction we are going to measure the pitch now this is the pitch that is the distance between two successive rivets okay and likewise we are going to use three rivets three rows of the rivets that's why this will become three here in this case n is three okay so in this case the area which is sustaining the shear or which is resisting to the shear that is nothing but the area of that rivet so pi by 4 d square small d square is the area of that rivet which is going to sustain the tensile load okay so uh, is there anybody who is trying to join no so in this case when we are going to calculate the rivets or the area of that rivet this is calculated for the single shear if this type of bud joints are used in that case double shearing will be occur for the rivets hence the area which is resisting or area which is undergoing for the shear will be 2 hence 2 is added here 2 pi by 4 d square okay and uh, this is for the two shearing now this 4 and this uh, two is theoretical one whereas in case of uh, uh, regulations which are developed by the indian government and are applicable to the boiler where already i have told you that this type of riveting joints were used for developing shells of the boilers and hence the coding or standardization is done for the uh, boiler manufacturing because boiler is nothing but a pressurized vessel and if it get fail it will act as a bomb and this steam pressure steam will come out and it will tear out all the what we can say the pressure vessel and uh, it will create the blast that's why the from the safety point of view indian government has developed this regulations actually basically it has been developed by the british government <laughs> now we are just using it we have not modified it you different parts are there we will not discuss about it so that regulations that has to be followed and in that case the instead of using two it is used as a 1.875 that is nothing but this area will be higher stress is equal to force divided by area if you are going to reduce the area then what is going to happen stress is going to increase right so we have to design this or we have to choose this diameter in such a way that it will be bigger and hence for the regulations our indian government has uh, applied this regulation that we have to choose area smaller than theoretical one the area which we are uh, theoretically calculated that is pi by 4 d square okay instead of that we have to reduce that area and that value instead of 2 which we are going to consider is 1.875 pi by 4 d square
okay now uh, sharing resistance or the pool which is required to share out all the rivets that is calculated by means of this p sub x s s is nothing but the shearing force is equal to n that is number of rivets which are used per unit pitch multiplied by area into allowable stress so area is pi by 4 d square in single shearing and multiplied by tau tau is the allowable shear stress in that uh, rivet material and theoretically for double shear as we know we have to just double it and from government regulations that two has been has to be replaced by means of 1.875 okay and this shearing load should not be greater than the applied load per pitch length of the structure so is there any question up till now hello if you have any doubt you are free to ask if not we will go further any doubt okay we we'll go further now if the failure is taking place because of the crushing of that rivets that means here the crushing will occur for the rivets as well as for the plate so when we are going to consider this type of failure then how to uh, calculate the resisting force or the force carrying capacity now you know that uh, basically this crushing stress is nothing but the compressible stress only so d is the diameter of rivet once again we are going to consider t is the thickness of the plate sigma c is the safe permissible crushing stress for the rivets or plate material both in both case that crushing may take place so here we are going to consider this sigma t as a safe crushing stress uh, are you able to hear me let me know yes sir okay because i am not hearing any response from you that's why i thought that just i am talking and you are not listening me okay let it be now when we are going to consider this safe permissible crushing stress for the rivet material that is sigma c n is the number of rivets per unit pitch length okay under the crushing now this area which is resisting to the crushing stress is denoted by a sub x t and is equal to diameter this diameter multiplied by thickness okay so this is rounded area we are, we are approximated it to the stress and that's why d into t that area has been calculated now the total area for the crushing per unit pitch is n into dt that is dt is the area that is a sub x c and the crushing resistance that can be calculated by means of p sub x c that is the load which can be carried by means of this riveted joint in case of crushing and that is equal to area which is undergoing for the crushing multiplied by the crushing allowable crushing stress okay n d t into sigma c okay when the crushing resistance that is pc is less than the or greater than not less than greater than the applied load then this failure will not be occur in case of crushing why because because in case of crushing the possibility may be there that the steam may get leak in that from that rivet and uh, that may not be leak proof joint okay this is the end of this unit and end of our uh, subject syllabus 2 so up till now if you do any question you are free to ask hello
what is speech lane tumi kon ki desh okay uh i saw your your question right now so uh, i will explain what the speech lane is here the distance between two successive rivets is called a speech lane along the longitudinal axis okay these plates are extended from this line and we are going to rivet in this line okay so that is called as speech lane any other question any other question hello if there any other question you are free to ask okay. 